I would like indeed to extend my very warm welcome to each and every one of you. But of course, I'd like to particularly acknowledge, in addition to those um, whom uh, Helen acknowledged, some very special guests here today. Of course, Mr. Laurie Bragg, who's at the front here, if you haven't had a chance to meet him. Um, our distinguished collection donor and his family members who are here today as well. Dr. Andrew Mautu, um, Director of the PNG National Museum and Art Gallery, who's here as well. And you do us great honour to be here today. Thank you. And I simply want to welcome all members of the community, our staff, our students, here this morning as we gather, as you've heard, on the traditional lands of the Irukandji and Javakai people, whose place in history in the present, as well as prospectively, we respect and we acknowledge. So welcome to this terrific celebration, and I believe it is a celebration, of the arrival and launch of the Bragg Collection, which has been gifted to James Cook University by Laurie Bragg to facilitate further research in this diverse and fascinating tropical region. In the place where this exponent comes from, what is now Jiwaka province, previously in the 1950s, it's uh, Western Highlands, Hagen, um, they have forests where they go and mine stones, which they use to create stone axes. Three kinds of stones, one is the green one, one is the grey one, and one is the black one. The one we have in our collection here is the black one. On, on, on special occasions, uh, big men, they hold them in their hands, and they talk. Or they go dancing and turn them around, you know. Normally it's on the shoulder here and they go dancing with it. It points this way, and so if they are going this way, that's that the, uh, the X dances with them. But if it's if they are talking, the X points back. The point of this X is that it is an implement to cut. It is decisive. And in the hands of a leader, your talk has to be incisive and decisive because you cut a clearing amidst confusion, amidst a lack of clarity, amidst chaos and disorder. Leadership cuts, clears the path and sets a direction. And this is what we require a university that sets a path, cuts a clearing for us. And archaeology has given us a motivation to dig up the past and anticipate the future. Thank you, Lori. I developed a long term friendship with David Attenborough, so I'm reading out um, David Attenborough's words here now. As Chief Minister of the Interim Government of Papua New Guinea in 1954, the year before independence, Michael Samari wrote a preface for the Papua New Guinea Public Museum and Art Gallery, guidebook to the collection booklet. In that preface, he said in part, the arrival of the German, British, Australian and Japanese had a great impact on the culture. Many of our ways, our arts and our beliefs have already been forgotten. In the struggle to hold our own in a modern technological world, it will be all too easy for our own culture to be lost forever. End of Michael Samari's book. While Sir Michael was making those observations, Laurie Bragg, the Australian Assistant District Commissioner at Ambunti in the Middle Sepik River, was diligently playing his role to ensure the important elements of the history and cultural heritage of the Sepik would be preserved. I'm in awe of the amount of work that James Cook University has put into this and very surprised. I did not expect anything like this. I want to thank James Cook University for accepting this donation, uh, but it's also great to have family, colleagues, friends. Chesco uh, came all the way from Japan for this, which is great. Uh, we worked together half a century ago in the Pacific Strickland Divide area. Um, but anyway, most of what's been said has been about the art collection, um, which is to me only part of what we're talking about. Um, most important to me was the um, archive, which is um, interviews with people and discussions and old reports. Um, 
But when we look at art, we need to think about um, in Sepik, you cannot, or anywhere in Tunisia, you cannot get close to our community to study it without understanding the spirits of the dead. Some of the art is reflective of an ancestor, um, and the spirit of that ancestor is often believed to be resident within the wooden carving or the pottery or whatever. Um, so the all of the uh, artifacts, mostly on display over there, um, probably have, or are believed to have, spirits associated with them. I sat amongst all this art um, while I was writing the secret history, and I was very comfortable writing. It belonged. So if the spirits were there, they were happy about what I was up to. So. And this is what makes Lloyd Bragg um, different from everything else. He, apart from many other places um, and other donors that we've had, because across the many decades of his life, he's exercised his ability to document, record and collect the past in order to coherently present it back to us, not just for one journey, but for many journeys. And that's a, a legacy um, that we will have. Uh, to be able to curate and fashion this according to his own principles and to his high regard for culture. Now, I have to thank a couple of key people as well that facilitated this donation with professionalism and an air of collegial cooperation, including Kate Watchap, who's our Camps Campus Library Manager and her team. Um, this culmination of a two-year journey would not have been possible without the passion, drive and commitment of the extraordinary Bronwyn McBurney, and Professor Rosita Henry. Uh, their dedication to seeing this through has been epic. This is a true example of a cross-divisional, academic and professional collaboration and partnership. And for me, that's what embodies our one JCU culture.